Good afternoon, everyone. Astronomers detect gigantic X-ray bubble out of the center of our galaxy. Looks like a Taurus wave. Summer snow falling in northern New Zealand. And just a day before, snow falling in Tasmania and Australia. Media writers try to dismiss it right away. And if these sheep were to speak, they would say electromagnetic change is affecting the jet stream and cloud cells. Are you ready for a reset? On November 6, China launched the world's first 6G satellite. However, new technology is also bringing new problems to privacy concerned consumers. Data tracking and privacy breaches are a bigger problem than ever. I do whatever I can to make sure my information stays private online. That means always using a VPN. You can head over to virtualshield.com and in the download tab, I'm going to choose Firefox and click install now to add the virtual shield add-on. It's just that easy and get started with your free 30 day trial. Install it. Click connect. You'll see the shield turn from red to green and you'll see how from my initial service provider, I was able to even change my IP virtual shield network protected. Try virtual shield for yourself for 30 days free and experience true online protection. You also can get 50% off for life if you try Virtual Shield during their limited holiday season special. So what do you have to lose? The link's in the description box below, and now on with the video. Who doesn't like bubbles? A Friday night evening of bubbles. Oh, gigantic X-ray bubble stretching out for the center of our Milky Way galaxy. The Hunab Ku expands. Visible now with satellites in the X-ray spectrum. Looks like a loose figure eight to me. Maybe that's why through history that figure eight of infinity. Maybe the ancients knew more about these Taurus waves and magnetic fields than we gave them credit for. Because this is the pulse of life. It's not a horizontal delivery of magnetic field. It's from all directions. The Fermi bubbles and the everlasting symbols of infinity make more sense when you see this in the X-ray spectrum. And if we see that Taurus wave going off of the Milky Way galaxy itself from the center of the quote-unquote black hole, we should have a Taurus wave around our planet as well. And if it is going to emanate onto the crust and create an energetic signature... Michael Tellinger explains this very well in Zimbabwe, these stone corrals. Because when you look out at the X-ray bursts, rings, and what do we see down in Zimbabwe? The rings. If you knew how to manipulate this energy and you set this up as a grid, it's a different kind of technology that we have not been taught about in the average school system. But I'm sure there are many people who know how this grid works. Ley lines are on some of these same principles. This energy has to emanate out of this Taurus wave in different areas on the planet that are mappable. And then you start to think with the right chemical and mineral composition in stones. Perhaps they could hold a resonant field. And if you knew the shape to hold the resonant field based on those same Taurus waves, you could harness and create energy. Great book here, African Temples of the Anunnaki from Michael Tellinger. We'll start you down that rabbit hole. And also, since we're thinking about spring planting season here in the Southeast U.S., the farm and garden calendar, this is for all the Southeast U.S. Nantahala Farms and Garden putting this out. I'll leave the link in the description box below. It takes you through every single month. We're in December. January is just around the corner, and a couple more months we're going to be planting again. Both books, very solid recommendations. Jumping down to New Zealand, who would have thought summer snow, third day into summer now, Southern Hemisphere, officially summer snow falling, Northern Southland, New Zealand, light snow, how many inches does, describes light snow, it looks like what, two to three inches there, temperatures plummeting overnight, but what I find so interesting here, the Met Service has shown snow down to 200 meters, for those of you in the U.S., that's 600 foot in elevation. Third day of summer, and look how much snowfall is coming down. 
Some areas as high as 2,100 feet were also showing snowfall totals. Now, a light dusting for me in my vocabulary is, you know, a quarter inch, half inch, may or may not stick on the roads depending on how cold it is. But a dusting does not cover sheep and stick to the wool. That's not a dusting. That's a proper heavy snow. I don't see any areas bare in the background there either. That's a very significantly heavy snow to cover all the vegetation, all the ground, and the animals like this on their wool. According to this, light rain would be a once in a hundred year flood. Snow falling on George Hill and Mossbum. But then just head west a little bit and you're going to bump right over into Tasmania. Tassie. Snowfall there the last couple of days as well. Headline sums it up. Tasmania wakes up to snow on the second day of summer in Australia. Third day of summer snow in New Zealand. And I did a video on this yesterday on how the media was deflecting. They kept focusing on heat wave, heat wave, heat wave all across Australia. And they missed the biggest story of the day, the snow down in Tasmania in summer. So they tried to write this away by saying, the heavy summer snowfall in Tasmania, they missed out on the heat wave. The whole story was about the snow, but the way they wrote it, 99% of it was about the heat wave, not the snow. They just twisted it. It was a very interestingly written article. I encourage you to read it to see how the narrative was all about heat, even though they were showing you the snow. This is from Mount Wellington overlooking Hobart. That does not look like a dusting either. To cover a city, higher elevations, lower elevations, that's right at sea level. And continuing on, you can see the depths right there at sea level, beach side, if you will, for the snows, second day of summer, Tasmania. But the article also writing about how it was the sixth warmest spring on record, which had nothing to do with anything else from the heat to the cold. It had nothing to do with it. I don't know what they're putting in there, but they use the word warmest in the sentence, if you notice that. So as we transition through these changes, you're going to be more responsible for growing your own food, forming your own communities where you have a better chance to survive as traditional systems start to break down. You know, the area I'm driving in out here in East Tennessee, these are the areas you want to look for. Stream right there. Productive farmland through the past as well. Earlier habitation, you know, how long have people been living in the area? 10,000 years is a pretty good Area to think that existence could continue there in some very abundant fashion, especially if there's a larger community. You have wood there for fire or for building, animal husbandry, and it's all about with your communities and everybody sharing skill sets in a more remote environment. For people to come out and find you out in this area here is going to be much more difficult. And if there is a crackdown of sorts, the countryside is going to be miles behind what will happen in cities first. This is your refuge and your camouflage for a while with the massive change happening across the planet. But remember, you will not be able to hide from this. You'll have to adapt through the changes. And how prepared are you for these changes with your food? Do you have emergency food and long-term stored food in your homes? If not, you might want to think about my Patriot Supply, the two-week or the four-week emergency food supply, along with ADAPT 2030, keeping you and your families more grand solar minimum prepared. I hope you got something out of the video. Try to add a little humor in here. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please subscribe and jump over to my Patreon channel forward slash ADAPT 2030, and I'll see you next time.